So we're coming into day two here at the Maryland Live WPT Deep Stacks 1650. Um, not quite in the money starting day two, but reasonably close. Um, pretty pumped to make it, decent snack. Let's just dive right into the hands. So uh, first off, blind start at 2K, 4K, 4K. I did play and you know win and lose some small pots before this one, uh, but this was sort of the first major one. So uh, blinds are now at 3K, 5K, 5K. We've got 280K in the stack, and I open King Jack offsuit in early position to 12K. Middle position calls and the big blind calls. So go three ways to a flop. That is pretty favorable for us. It is the ace, queen, 10. Just flop Broadway right away. When it checks to me, I definitely want to be continuing. It is a wet board. It's a board where a lot of people are going to be able to have a lot of continuing hands. So I go ahead and see bet 18K. And middle position doesn't want to wait. He just makes it 42K right off the bat. Big line folds and... I think it's an interesting decision between calling and jamming. Obviously, uh, you know, when this guy makes it 42K and he's only got about 150 or 160K in front of him, uh, it's definitely going to be reasonable to jam. It could be reasonable to call as well, but I think when the boar has a flush draw on it, I think when he's raising such a wet flop, it's very likely he just always has a hand he's going with. And I'd rather stick in the money now than potentially make a bad decision on the turn when a bad card comes. So I go ahead and jam it. It's I make it something like 160 and he calls all in for less. Um, somehow he has just this good old ace jack with the ace of spades. So he's actually blocking my, uh, you know, any bluffs I could really have here. And we're in fantastic shape. All he can really do is chop it or run out a backdoor flush. So the turn is a nine of diamonds, saves us from any potential uh, loss, just trying to fade the chop outs now. And the river ace of hearts is gonna be good enough. We chip up to a bit over 400K here. Here at this next hand, uh, we've moved on to the 3K, 6K, 6K level. Uh, it's certainly, um, some hands have happened in the meantime because we're down 350k from being somewhat above 400k. Tight guy limps in from under the gun off of a 115,000 stack. So pretty weird. Uh, already kind of have alarm bells in my head like this guy's tight. Why is he limping under the gun? He's only got like 20 bigs. I don't think he's doing like a sophisticated limping strategy or anything here. So when I'm in the big blind with the ace seven of diamonds, uh, I'm kind of immediately worried about aces, even though I have an ace in my hand. I just decided to check here. I don't think raising really makes any sense at this stack depth. So the flop comes out, queen, 10, deuce with two diamonds. And in my head, I'm like, why do I have to flop so well? <laughs> I check, he now bets 12K and we definitely have options here. I mean, his range is not just aces. But I think his range will be kings, queens plus a lot. And, you know, I don't think we necessarily have to check fold. But I definitely think calling is going to be better than jamming. But I think I take the worst option here and I go ahead and jam it all in. He actually tanks, which in my head I was thinking this is great. Maybe he's just got like ace king or something. Maybe he's got uh, jacks and he may actually fold or I have more outs than I would expect. He takes for a solid like 30, 45 seconds before calling with aces. <laughs> so uh, kind of funny that, um, you know, he would play this hand this way and then not snap when he gets this action. I think it's sort of a slam dunk for him. But, you know, it's it's one of those spots where uh, you kind of talk yourself into, oh, man, like I could definitely be beat here. And he could be for sure. So um, turn is the ace of spades just to make sure that I lose a, one of my outs and the river's a brick. So get to double him up here, chip down a fair bit and uh, move a couple steps closer to the money actually, because a lot of bust outs are happening in the meantime, not necessarily so much at uh, my table, but here at this next hand, we are five off the money with 250K in the stack after that little debacle. I open it up in the hijack with queen 10 to 15K. 
the small blind calls who is the uh, same guy from the previous hand and he's actually got about 230k behind so still pretty much has the same amount that i doubled him up to flop comes out ace queen jack i decided to check it back when he checks to me i think we have so much showdown value but not a lot of uh, hands that we can get value from the turn is a six of diamonds he bets 15k and i decide to make the call we have the gutter uh you know even if we don't aren't good right now we have some outs almost always the river is a good looking card it's the king of spades he checks and i now have to sort of decide about sizing i decide to go 67k which i think might be a hair big um he may still call with two pair with the size but i think we're getting him off of one pair a lot he tanks and ultimately does call and my hand is good he doesn't show so we don't really know exactly what happened here but nice to take that one down and uh recoup a little bit from from the previous hand against him meanwhile uh people are still busting we're now four off the money at the 4k 8k 8k level and then without really even playing another hand we are suddenly in the money uh, and playing the 10k, 15k, 15k level. So I pretty much didn't get to play all that many hands in the meantime. I did chip up a bit, probably just from making opens on the bubble, getting people to fold pre. Um, nothing too really worth discussing, but ultimately we're here with 26 players left and 500k in the stack. I'm in early position with ace 10 of diamonds and I make it 35k. The small blind shoves 150k and the big blind folds. Uh, this is a competent enough player. He's not only going to have super strong hands, especially at this stack depth. So pretty clear call off here. I make the call. He has king queen of spades. So we're actually in pretty good shape. And the board runs out 9-8-8 eight, eight with uh, no spades, one diamond turn is the nine of diamonds so he actually loses two of his overcard outs pretty fantastic card the river is the deuce of clubs so uh we stack that player chip up a fair bit and we're uh gonna eliminate someone as well 24 players left 750k in the stack we're eight handed right now i am under the gun with ace king of hearts and i open it up to 35k middle position calls the big blind now shoves 225k and middle position has about 550k himself, so it doesn't really make sense to just flat here. It's going to lead to potentially some very weird spots. I just decided to reshove since these stacks kind of dictate it. Uh, middle position ends up folding, and the big blind has ace jack of diamonds. So in fantastic shape here to stack another player. The board just runs out pure bricks. Couldn't tell you what a single card on the board is. And we go ahead and stack another one. This next hand, we've got 950k in the stack, probably about 20 players left. Middle position, who's a good player, makes it 35k with 500k in his stack. I'm in the big blind with jack nine of clubs, so definitely want to be seeing a flop here. I make the call. Flop comes out, pretty great for us once again. Second time we're going to flop a straight today. King, queen, 10. Two clubs as well, so we have pretty much an uncounterfeitable hand um there's a couple things that could happen that we wouldn't like like a obviously jack hitting the board um but ultimately we just have a super duper strong hand i check it and unfortunately he ends up checking it back the turn is the seven of spades and this is really our first interesting decision point in the hand we can lead and it's likely that he's going to have something like a queen sometimes something like a 10 sometimes smaller pocket pairs but I decide to check instead. I think that it's debatable. I think leading is probably like the default thing to do, but I felt like checking was a little more deceptive. And again, our hand is just so hard to counterfeit. There's so few bad rivers for us. I think this is a good candidate to check raise. So I go ahead and check. He does oblige us this time with a bet of 30K. And now I'm going to raise it up. I make it 110k and he does make the call so this is really good news the river is the king of diamonds and on the surface this might look like a sort of bad card it does pair the board so if he ever had to pair with a king if he ever had sets uh you know this would be a bad card but i don't expect a lot of sets or two pairs to check this flop the turn basically never gives him two pair uh so it just doesn't really make a lot of sense for him to have boats 
he could have quads perhaps uh and he could certainly have flopped the nut straight that's totally possible too but besides that we're really looking at probably like some weaker kings uh a queen sometimes and really just like combo draw type stuff like queen jack ja, jack 10. so i go ahead and put in a bet of 140k he does end up calling and of course pretty much when he just calls my hand is always good and indeed it is so nice one to pick up here we cross the 1 million chip mark and move on with 18 players left so 1.3 mil in the stack now I am under the gun with pocket sevens and I make it 40k under the gun plus one who is a buddy of mine John Gilliam goes ahead and shoves it folds around to me and I kind of have to sigh and make the call I think it's around only you know two or three hundred k at this point so I'm not happy about it but definitely calling here he's got ace king offsuit and the board runs out king king eight so right away not exactly what we were looking for although his you know third king for trips doesn't really make a difference the turn is the deuce of diamonds and the river eight of clubs is going to be no good for us we're going to ship uh, a medium-sized one over to him there i must chip up in some other ways here because my stack is now bigger it's kind of hard when you get short-handed to take a lot of notes on hands especially the small ones but we're now with 12 players left at the 15k 30k 30k level with 1.7 mil in the stack. Folds around to me in the cutoff and I've got ace seven of hearts. Everyone behind me has 450K or less. So it's just not really gonna be uh, a spot where we can uh, do a whole lot. I could certainly raise small. And I think if I were playing this hand again today, I would probably just min raise, but I choose instead to shove. We're so close to the final table bubble. I felt like uh, in the moment that was probably gonna be best um the button who is john once again wakes up calls it off and unfortunately that means we're always going to be way behind the other players fold and indeed he's got pocket tens and again he flops me uh in pretty bad shape so the board comes out king 10 8 with just one heart so at this point i do have a couple ways that i can get there i i can river uh excuse me i can run her hearts i can run her a straight but it's going to be hard to do and the turn four of diamonds just provides zero help the river's an irrelevant brick and uh we're gonna tumble john up once again uh apparently that's just the the name of the game today in this next hand we've got uh 10 players left so we are on the final table bubble here i believe 20k 40k 40k blinds and 1 million in the stack so we have chipped down a fair bit and we are uh you know sitting on just 25 bigs pretty much early position with 2 million in the stack makes it 90k i'm in the cutoff with jack 10 of spades and i i really don't like my play here at all i think i should just be probably folding pre um maybe jamming pre if i if i think early position is going to be kind of wide here but I choose to call. Um, I think I was just kind of getting a little bit fed up with not really getting to play a lot of hands and the hands I was playing not really going my way. The flop comes pretty decent for us. It's ace, nine, eight with one spade. So open-ended, backdoor flush draw, and he c-bets 80k. Definitely not folding now. And we're kind of have an option between raising and calling. I don't think I would have a lot of value bet uh, raises here though. So I'm just going to call at this point. The turn is a nine of diamonds and he bets 180k now this is definitely a card i could consider raising on um, but i felt like a lot of my hands that improve on this card would choose to continue slow playing it's a full rainbow board now so again i decide to just call the river is the five of hearts and he now checks this is pretty much the perfect opportunity we were looking for. I think he's going to have a lot of double barrels and give ups on this card. Um, it just, it's a card that favors me. It's a turn card that favors me too, but uh, basically I have a bunch of nine X. I have seven, six suited potentially. Um, and a lot of my, you know, brick draws are hands exactly like what I have, which could have raised an earlier street. So from his perspective, I have some sets. I've got some two pairs. I've got a lot of ace X in my range. So when he checks, I bet 350K and he just snap folds. Uh, so he 
probably was just making a pure bluff with a similar type of hand, something like a queen jack or a king queen maybe. But nice to pick one up there and uh, kind of turn the tide so far as how things have been going. This next hand, um, we've got 1.6 mil in the stack, so a little bit healthier, and early position, open jams, 490k. I'm in the big blind with pocket eights and have a very clear call. He's got ace king of diamonds and the board runs out. 7-5-3 with two diamonds. So uh, plenty going on for him. He's still got, you know, his six overcard outs, nine flush outs. He's actually, I think, still a favorite at this point, although I do have the eight of diamonds. Um, so it's even closer. But the turn ace of spades kind of uh, ruins the suspense. The river's a brick, and he's going to ship that one through us, unfortunately. 1.2 mil in the stack now. I opened pocket queens from early position to 80k. Middle position calls, and he covers me by quite a lot. So when the flop comes down, king 4-3, it's an interesting decision between checking and c-betting. I think in general, checking would be fine, but in a spot like this, close to the final table, uh, there's a lot of value in just winning the pot. So I do decide to see bet 110k. He does end up calling and the turn is the eight of hearts. I decide to check now because I don't think we're going to get a ton of value from worse. I think a lot of his range that we would have gotten called by on the flop are ace high or pocket pairs. Um, and a lot of those pocket pairs will just give up now. So I decide to check and he checks it back. The river is the seven of hearts and... You could certainly argue for betting here to try to get called by those pocket pairs once again, but I think it's kind of nice to have a check here with queens because we could potentially check call, uh, and it sort of protects a lot of our just flop C bets that then give up turn and river. I decide to check, and he just checks it back, and my hand is good. So again, we chip up here, and we actually end up bagging for the night, making the final table, and... Um, just pretty much you know can't can't really complain at all right a lot of stuff had to go my way here a lot of stuff went just absurdly well piece it together and one mil five hundred seventy five thousand in the stack certainly not chip leading but in pretty okay shape you're pretty much always in okay shape if you're making the final table another final table feels kind of crazy but we're we're at it again and <laughs> not exactly chip lead but we're in pretty good shape with 1,575,000 in the bag of the one point or the 11-ish uh, million in play. So not bad. Uh, very swingy last few levels of the night, but can't complain too much about losing flips after you know running so hot to get here. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get home, get some sleep, and get ready for tomorrow. Let's do it. Moving on to day three and the final table of nine, it was a pretty stacked table. Um, lots of very solid players, uh, nobody making really horrendous mistakes at this point, and uh, it's a little surprising. Uh, in a tournament like this, at this buy-in level uh, and in this locale, you kind of expect more weak spots at these final tables, but it just didn't really turn out that way. So you're gonna notice that kind of from this final table, we just kind of had to go for some spots couldn't really just wait around uh, blind out because a lot of the stacks were pretty similar and pretty short. Um, but likewise, you know, couldn't let people run over us either. So in this first hand at the final table, we're playing the 30K, 60, 60K level, and we've got 1.485 mil in the stack. Big blind has about 650K, and the small blind has me covered. I'm in the cutoff with queen jack offsuit, and I think we have some options here. Uh, min raising is definitely fine, but I decide to limp in instead. I felt like we were going to have such a um, better hand than the big blinds, just 100% range, that this was pretty okay. If he jams, we could consider folding depending on you know how we feel about the situation. And if the small blind decides to do something, we could potentially just call. So... 
the small blind ends up folding, the big blind ends up checking, and the flop comes out ace, ace, deuce. He checks, and I bet 85k. I think this is kind of a mistake. I think queen high is just so far ahead of his range that we just don't really even need to bet here. And if we do bet, it should probably just be a min bet. Unfortunately, I do decide to bet, and he makes it 245k. Now, it's a pretty weird spot because I think that a lot of his range will not be ace -X. He may raise ace -X here sometimes just because there's two hearts on board. But I think a lot of his range is just air uh, and heart draws. So I think there certainly could be a case to be made for jamming. But in the moment, I just felt like it was going to risk too much of my stack for something I wasn't sure enough about against a player where I didn't really think he was going to just go crazy with the bluffs. Like a lot of players will just have pure bluffs here or pure no bluffs. Uh, this is not one of those players. I didn't feel sure about doing one thing or the other, so I just decided to fold. But I really think checking back flop is kind of the way to go. This next hand, the cutoff with 2.5 mil opens to 125k. I'm in the big blind with 1.4 mil, and I look down at pocket sevens. So at this stack depth and with the stacks that are in play, the money out in the middle of the pot is super relevant to me at this point. If I pick up the you know two big blinds from him, the two and a half big blinds from the blinds and ante, uh, it's a pretty big deal. And so rather than calling, mostly seeing really bad flops and having to make some really tough decisions, I decided to just shove. You could certainly argue that flatting is better, and I've been back and forth on that a bunch. Uh, but I, sho I, I know for sure that shoving is profitable. It's just really a question of, can we make better decisions uh, from the big blind with this hand than we'd be able to uh, you know, gain from just shoving now? I didn't really think so, and I don't know how I feel now. I still think it's pretty close. But ultimately, I shoved. He tanked for a pretty long time, but ultimately called with pocket eights. <laughs> so... Not uh, not the result we wanted, definitely not the hand we wanted to see. You kind of hope he's got like an ace-jack type hand. But on this board, it didn't really end up mattering too much. The flop comes out ace-queen three, so pretty much any hand that he would call off with, we are now losing to. Uh, we've still got just our two outs of a seven. The turn is the ace of hearts, and the river is the deuce of diamonds, and we're out in eighth place so pretty brutal uh right at the end it's just like so much has to go right to get you there to the final table but there's so much up top you really need to keep running really good uh at those final tables and of course playing well too you could certainly argue that that last hand was a mistake i think the hand before that was definitely a mistake uh so pretty i was pretty disappointed right in the moment uh but ultimately was happy with my play overall and, you know, we keep learning from these experiences, right? I was out in eighth place for 15K and change. And, uh, you know, those scores are always great. But ultimately, we need to get into those, like, top one, two, three spots uh, to, to really have an impact in MTTs. But it's hard live. You know, you, you play slow. You can only play a certain amount of events per year. So I find that being critical of my play is important. But I also need to step back and be grateful for even getting there in the first place because it's just not going to happen that often for most of us. Ultimately, was pretty happy to get that one done. Uh, it was kind of fun reliving this these hands for this video, uh, even though it's kind of been a while. I hope you guys also enjoyed reliving these hands with me. If you did, consider subscribing, leave it a thumbs up, comment down below, and share this video with a friend. Otherwise, I think I'll just see you guys another video uh there's a lot of stuff coming up that's gonna be really cool i'm pretty pumped for some of my travel pretty pumped for uh some of the stuff that i've got coming so i hope you guys are too and i'll see you there soon